We've got an unruptured right MCA bifurcation aneurysm. Okay. Our fellow Kurt will run through the clinical vignette great. for you now. All right. Okay, great. So, yeah, like Dr. Lee says, coil embolization for an unruptured MCA aneurysm. Dr. Mocker, Dr. Lacey, and um, Kurt and this Shram, two fellows. Go ahead. Next slide, please. This is a 63-year-old female, history of smoking and breast cancer and lung sarcoma. And based on the uh, lung cancer, she got some brain imaging, CT head with contrast, showed multiple intracranial aneurysms. Uh, she was recently treated for one of these aneurysms. Uh, this is a right PCOM aneurysm, which uh, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but that's uh, what we're looking at right now, the coil mass. Um, and now we're bringing her back electively for this unruptured uh, two uh, MCA aneurysms that we'll be seeing shortly. Next slide, please. So this is the CTA of the head, uh, showing the MCA bifurcation aneurysm. Next slide, please. This is from the previous diagnostic angiogram showing all three aneurysms, the PCOM and the MCA aneurysms. Next slide, please. And here's a 3D rotation of, the, uh, of all these aneurysms, so. Next slide. This is uh, in the last angiogram, the pre and post coiling of the PCOM aneurysm, and you can still see the, the middle cerebral ar artery aneurysms there uh, un untreated, which we're tackling today. Next slide. So the treatment options for this, again, we have open surgical options, which involve craniotomy and clipping of the aneurysms. And then endovascular includes uh, primary coil embolization with or without balloon assistance, stent assist coiling, and then flow diversion. And today we'll most likely be doing balloon assist coiling embolization. Can you pull this down towards the feet, please? Yeah, so we're just getting the uh, final, or sorry, the first imaging and the working projections. I guess you guys can see the AP when it comes through. It's pretty good. Uh, a little more towards the feet, please. So there's actually there's the there's an aneurysm complex at the bifurcation. There's a smaller aneurysm coming off the frontal division or the superior division, which you can just see. Yep. And the larger, more round one that looks like a ball coming off the inferior division. The larger one's one that's going to be treated today, and again, it's it's either going to be straight coil with protection of a balloon or balloon-assisted coil embolization. Yeah, I mean, the the reasons for going radial for neuro are pretty simple and and similar to the ones for going radial for cardiac or peripheral IR. You know, there's there's safety data which is really hard to argue against coming from cardiology literature and, and you know in neuro we're never ever going to get to the point of having you right. know the thousand thousand people RCTs to ever get comparison to that so we have to kind of extrapolate but you know again with the post-operative uh, care of these patients having them sitting up straight away coming out of GA being able to be nursed at 45 degrees is helpful for the anesthesiologists and of course, these patients, a lot of them are on dual antiplatelet therapy and coming off off loaded loaded heparin dosing. So there are, you know, although although you know, groin related compl complications are rare, they're always they're always rare until you have your next one. So <laughs> it kind of leaves it leaves it uh, out of the equation, which is nice. So the wires had a little bit of play on it. So I'm going to pin it and bring the balloon up a little higher. Uh, there are many that wouldn't balloon this. Um, it's a reasonable nectodome. She's got a long, pretty complicated medical history. And in fact, when she had her her um, PCOM aneurysm coiled, although she had no untoward event, she did have a little bit of extra av, and we had a balloon in place that was able to completely manage that. But it highlights why I think having a balloon can be a really tremendous help. So we now have the balloon positioned across the neck of the aneurysm. So now what we do is we're we're going to bring our uh, coiling catheter out and up. <coughs> we with one hand pin the pin the balloon catheter. Once we're intracranial, we only move one wire or microcatheter at a time. And now we simply cast the aneurysm like so. So 
The Target XL 10 by 40. Okay. So it's a 14,000th diameter coil. No. Hmm. By the way, 40 is a bit long on our for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so we'll uh, we'll see if we get this last little bit in there. I have faith. Huh. Basically, Reed ensured me that it would go, and I've got faith in him. So we'll see. <clears throat> um, her anatomy is a little bit of a, a bit tortuous, so getting the exact perfect view, and we didn't do yeah. a. You know, we didn't do a 3D to find exactly the yeah. perfect view, but I have a good sense of where the anatomy is. That's part of why the balloon's helpful as well. Yeah. It sort of tells sort of me exactly where yeah. we need to be. Yeah. So now we're just crossing to detach. There you now go. I'm it looks like the 40's the right one. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it was the right one. There was no challenges <laughs> there. He didn't miss a chance to talk trash, did he? we got to think back, though. So that's <laughs> I've got to take it where I can. <laughs> Uh, so one of the things, again, that I like about having the balloon is once you have the framing coil, you can kind of play with your view a little to see if, right, the coil's mark, mark, marking out the aneurysm very well. So I kind of know where I need to be. Hey, this is going to be nice. Oh, I mean, can I do that a little more? Well, that's the extent of it. So if you see, I can pull that that MCA, that's about as good as I'm going to get below. That should show us the neck even nicer than what yeah. we had before. See on the AP, there's a uh, roadmap with a subtracted view, and uh, you can see we're just sort of filling off the neck there. Yeah. Um, Is that the balloon the inflated there? Nope. No, that's the uh, coils filling the previously subtracted coils part, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, the balloon is in position. Uh, I actually have not inflated it yet. So far, we're getting some nice painting. I'm happy with it. We'll probably have to soon, just for the final closure. We also, in the neurospace, I don't know if you guys have this, we have a, an alternative balloon called the Scepter. You guys probably use this, right? It's a yeah. dual lumen balloon, so you don't run that risk. I prefer the transform for aneurysm remodeling because of the speed of its inflate-deflate. And frankly, because of the speed of its prep, which is quicker and easier. Gentlemen. This is a nice oh. thing about having the balloon in place at the end when you get down to the last final coils and give you a little bit more stability to get your final ultra soft coils in without the catheter popping out and the coils being pulled out into the parent artery. Correct. Just a bit of extra security. So if that didn't go, my next maneuver was to inflate the balloon to pin the catheter in place and kind of force it. Uh, obviously, you still got a feel on that because you can tear the aneurysm doing that, but uh, we try not to do that. Generally, it's a good rule not to do that. Going, you so. see that, guys, on the on the AP, yeah. just uh, between 12 and 3 o'clock, there's that curvilinear contrast. It's a little bit difficult to say whether that's a branch or whether that's part of aneurysm wall. Yeah. So we might have to do some views to throw it off a little bit to see if we can see it yeah. better. I'm pretty sure it's aneurysm, and we're going to be inflating the balloon to get that last bit. So yeah, with these, you know, the balloon in place can give you that stability. You can go to softer, long, small coils. Different vendors have them. Sometimes they're a little bit better at finding finding nooks and crevices. So we're stepping down in diameter of the shape that it makes, and length, and also the thickness. Sorry, the, the stiffness. So this is an ultra soft. It's the second softest coil in the in the striker line. Yeah, so the lateral, which you guys can't see, shows us nice that this is filling around the edge. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's all important. Although, like, the, the images look pretty good, when we break down how aneurysms are treated and followed up, we use a grading scale. And if you've filled 95% of the aneurysm, but there's still contrast making it along the wall of the aneurysm, it's still technically its worst grade. And it's the, you know, it's called the Raymond Roy classification. And the risk of those recurring or needing retreatment are the highest of the group. So you really have to try and make sure at least all the, all the aspects of the wall I didn't know have, have a decent amount of coil, at least basis of contrast there. Getting good feeling on that on that part though. It's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're going for. So we're, I'm going to put one more into that little area. Um, again, her vitals are all stable. She's doing well. I'll be ready to do my run when I deflate the balloon, and we'll see. Hopefully, you don't see a lot of black extra. F. That's always the goal. Okay, good. Yeah. 
off there. Uh, so bringing the balloon down very slowly and gently but keeping it in place so it's ready to go back up if it's needed. Listening to the heart rate to see if I see any changes, which I don't so far. I think we have a pretty well treated in here. Looks good. It looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we need to push for anything more at this yeah. point. Looks great, Jack. Reed, you agree? Yeah, I agree. I think it looks pretty damn good. On top of that, when we come back the next time, we're, she's going to come back in a few weeks, we're going to stent and treat the other MCA aneurysm. When we do that, the stent will end up covering this neck a good bit. So Perfect. even if there is a little something, that will take care of the rest of it. So it should be all right. Yeah, good. So all last right. little bit. Uh, I mean, if you need to run, feel free. What I'm going to do yeah. is I'm going to inflate the balloon and use it to detach the uh, coil or pull okay. the microcatheter out so that you don't pull any little last-minute uh, buddy oh, okay. out into the artery. Yeah. 